Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes, and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today is Black Friday. I'm recording this message for you, and we're going to be talking about how you in your small business can innovate. And it's a word that we throw around a lot. It's thrown around a lot in tech, in the startup community. But we're going to be talking about your small business and how you should be thinking about innovation and making sure your business is not a one-trick pony. Before we get into today's show, though, a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Gusto. If you haven't already, go to gusto.com slash bootcamp. If you're listening to this on this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, you have some time on your hands, I encourage you to go to this website, check it out. You're getting 90 days completely free. You don't even have to put your credit card number in. You can try it out and put all your employees' information over the weekend, and then next pay period, they can get an automatic transfer right into their bank account. Try it out today. Go to gusto.com slash bootcamp and get that exclusive trial today. Now, what I want to be sharing with you today is a word that I don't even like to use because it's been so thrown around so so glibly in the startup community, small business, etc. And I think it's so often uh, misused or completely neglected in the small business realm. Because the reason I say it's abused is because in the startup community, innovation is looked as like disruption and changing industries and all of this sort of thing. When I think about small businesses and businesses that have been around for generations and really can't change a whole lot in terms of what their what their function, the, the root of them is, for example, you know, handyman repair is never going to be a robot. Is it, we're a long ways from a robot being able to do, you know, fix your faucet and change out tile and hardwood, like those sort of services, uh, the services in the small business kind of world that is is most prevalent, um, those things, innovation sometimes seems so far away. But what I'd encourage you is not, don't neglect innovation. And what I mean by that is, you know, some of the things that I would, I would really encourage to do is is to steal the trends of other industries. And so whether you are looking at the tech industry or you're looking at software or the all the reason I, t- I look at those type of industries is because they're so publicized and they're so out in the media so much, you're able to hear about them, like what they're doing and what their changes are, what they're doing in their marketing, what are their trends, what is happening in those in those industries that are perhaps years ahead of your industry. And look at those trends. And really begin to watch what they're doing. And for example, I'm in the lawn care, landscaping, et cetera, uh, industry. And then we have a handyman division. And then I do gyms. And then I do this online thing with podcasting and things like that. And it's interesting. The stuff on the podcasting websites, online course world that I work in is a couple years ahead of where like the gym is at from a technological standpoint. Uh, It's a couple years ahead because everyone online is, you know, innovating and changing and evolving and making new things all the time. The gym is pretty evolved. It's pretty, it's a, a big franchise. So they have technology and things like that, but it's a couple of years behind, right? Like they're just getting into where people can buy a membership online uh, without having to come into the club. That's just starting to happen. Um, so they're a couple of years behind. And then behind that would be like my lawn care landscape. That, that sort of industry is even behind the gym by several years. And so really, When you look at it from a technological standpoint, innovation standpoint, the lawn care landscape industry is probably a good 10 years uh, in a lot of regards behind what we'd call, you know, cut, you know, cutting edge technology and just as industry in whole as a whole. When, you know, 80% of the industry isn't even using a CRM system. It's just like, my goodness, we're way behind the times. And so, you know, we're behind our industry. But what I, what I find interesting is you can look at your industry and kind of determine that number. Okay, how many years are we behind the times? It, it, you know, five, year, five, six, seven years ago, lawn care landscape industry, a lot of companies weren't even online. Now we've caught up. We're online. We're, we're, not everyone is, but a lot of landscaping companies are online now and trying to figure out SEO and all that. But SEO was around ages ago. Like, that was, this is not cutting technolo- technology. This is not brand new stuff. They're not innovating anything. What they're doing, though, is they are stealing the trends of other industries. The objective is to stay closer to, like, right behind the time instead of 10 years behind, like, the lawn care landscaping. Like, for instance, for a company that was 10 years ago thinking about websites, SEO, 
YouTube strategy, social media, and they're in the lawn care landscaping industry, guarantee you today they're a very, very successful company. Uh, just because they got ahead of the, the pack, they innovated in our industry. Nothing new, but they stole the trends of other industries. And that's what I'd encourage you to do. Steal the, let, let, the, let the tech industry and the guys who have all the cash prove your next marketing campaign. Like, why do you need to go reinvent the wheel and figure out what, what customers are wanting or what, what sort of text or what sort of video, what sort of emotions that they are trying to evoke? Why would you want to have to rehash all of that and create all of that again? Let the, let the industries that are bigger you, than you, the companies that are bigger than you, let them do the groundwork for you to learn from and then you just copy or you, some, you basically, the innovation is tailoring it to your industry. So if Apple is doing it for phones and for tablets and for computers, can you innovate by basically taking that same idea, that concept, and then customizing it to your industry and what you're doing. So for example, I th this weekend, you know, it's interesting how Apple puts these two to three to four minute advertisements out come Christmas uh, and Thanksgiving the, around the holidays that are literally like short movies and they're p millions of people watch them and it's very interesting there's very not very much product placement there's not a lot of uh, advertising like logos and there's no words a lot of times it's it's very emotional many times and it's incredible that type of branding like why are they doing that like obviously they figured something out and those are many times their best performing marketing pieces above just a phone being talked about its megapixels and the camera and the depth of field and this, the beveled edges like the, the the type of branding videos and short movies that they make in the holiday season outperform those by far and so looking at those looking at those trends saying okay is there a way for my industry for my business to create a video or create a marketing piece that's more like that instead of in, for example, in the lawn care landscaping industry, instead of saying, well, I cut grass and I cut it once a week and I also do these services, that is the equivalent of showing the iPhone flipping around with a nice voice in the background and talking about the price and the megapixels and the hardware and the design and the color ratio and the camera. Like that's just a bunch of features and like it, I'd much rather watch something that they put out in the holiday season that is going to have emotion, that is going to have design built into the storyline. And then if they have their products and they're great, that's what they're trying to do. But they create this emotion around their branding. And that is something that we as small business owners can learn from and realize that you don't have to be promotional all the time. You don't always have to talk about your services or your product or what you're doing or always talk about price. Sometimes the best thing to do is go branding and then figure out how to engage customers and bring them to your site via the emotion of that that storyline or the, the 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 video or the product or the uh, the picture and that text. How does it bring people in in a branding format? Because you look at these big companies and you see the best performing branding and you see their best performing marketing pieces and their pictures in the video and then learn from them. Let them spend all the money, let them spend the million, two million dollars to make that ad, and then you watch the results. You figure out what works and what doesn't. Watch the comments. I love watch. I love reading the comments on videos that are put around Black Friday, that are put out, uh, that are marketing pieces and more branding. I like watching the comments and seeing what people react to. Uh, so looking at those trends and stealing them from in other industries and figuring out how can I use them in my business. For example, you might be a you know a bakery. Well, can, is there any way you can learn from Uber about how to deliver your bakery goods to the people within your community? That's just one example. How can I learn from Grubhub or from Zappos or from other any tech company or you know, quote unquote innovating company, groundbreaking technology. How can I apply that to a boring industry like lawn care, landscaping, a gym, a podcast, and figure out how to reach my customers in a more effective way by stealing the trends and the innovative products and services of other industries? The next thing I would say is, you know, don't be a one trick pony. When it comes to innovation, this is sometimes what we have to think about is not necessarily creating anything new, but but creating multiple avenues in which to contact your customers or create revenue within your business. What I mean by this is I get really, I get kind of nervous when I go into a business and they are literally selling one thing all the time, every day of the week, 
And that's all they do. They product, they aren't doing any R and D. They're just literally trying to sell this one thing. Uh, it might be something that is uh, more of a trend or is a, you know a one time sort of fad. That I kind of get worried that they're they're banking everything on that one product instead of creating other products, other miscellaneous services, and basically creating a brand around their business. And so. When I, when I talk about the one trick pony, I get worried when people have one product or one service that they're constantly thinking about, constantly working on, because if there's ever a, you know an innovation or a disruptive technology in that one field, for example, people do lawn care all the time. All they do is mow grass, mow grass, mow grass, mow grass, and that's great, but what happens when robot mowers really do take tra- have traction, and all of a sudden, within two, three years, Amazon or Lowe's or Home Depot... Uh, rents out these robot mowers for $10 a month to homeowners, and now you are really in trouble. Uh, that You say, well, that's a big issue, but it could have been mitigated or it could have been eliminated if you weren't a one-trick pony doing mowing only. What if you did some chemical treatments? What if you did some landscaping or tree trimming or snow plowing? Uh, what if you were able to diversify your services in order to mitigate the risk of technology wiping out the one thing that puts bread on the table for you and your family? And so I really look at this as looking as a really as a way like you say well I don't do services uh, I'd really be looking at if you have a product based business how do I innovate how do I not become a one trick pony and how do I create services around the product that I make so if I am making cameras can I make the service cuz that's my product I make cameras all right how can I make become the service provider to create the lessons and the masterminds and the podcasts and create services around my product how can i become the 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 service provider for weddings or for graduations or for big events where i become the service provider not for just creating making the camera and selling the camera but i also now create the uber of photographers where people can go on and get select their their photographer how do i create a service around my product and i'd be thinking the same way if you are a product based business i'm sorry a, a service based business how do i create a product around my industry that I would use every single day and have another revenue stream. And it might not even be an actual product, like physical product, for example. If you do lawyer services, you might not go out and create the next software for lawyers, but you might try to figure out, okay, I have a bunch of services, an hourly rate that I charge. How can I productize my services into a package that I can sell for one set price? So for example, instead of charging $200 $200 an hour for your lawyer services, you could say, you know what, for a, if you want a will, a power of attorney, and like, uh, you know, last will and testament sort of thing, and figure, you know, $999, you're gonna get it all set up, you're gonna get it set up with your, with your life insurance, and, and then like productize it. Some people might take more than, like five hours would be your regular rate of $200 per hour, for example. So that'd be $1,000. Some people might take seven, eight hours to complete that job. And you might, my goodness, I only was charging 70 bucks an hour. But then there are other people that are going to take an hour or two hours and you're going to complete all of that work. And they have no problem with paying a set price, a productized price around your services. And that's what I'd be thinking about. Innovation doesn't always come in terms of technology or a new app or a new software or a new website, a new CRM. Those are great things. But I think innovation for the small business owner is done in, the, in, in two different ways. Number one, looking at other industries and copying the ideas they have, the marketing techniques, the way that they treat their teams and that they hire people. What are the ways that they are being successful? And that what's great about those things is they are many times very public. They are very, uh, they're in the media. You're able to copy them pretty easily to an industry that might that yours might be years behind. The second way to innovate, in my opinion, is start thinking outside the realm of the current products or services that you offer. And that might mean just another product or another type of exil- uh, auxiliary, or how, however you say the word, auxiliary service or something else that complements your product. But it might be like, literally, if you do products and you sell goods and, and the things, the physical products, how do you create a service around it? It might be vice versa. You, cre- you have services, you have handyman services. How do you create a product around that handyman service? 
And you could do it in one of two ways when you create a product around a service. Number one, you could productize your services by creating bundles and selling packaged services. That's the $1,000 or the $9.99 for the lawyer to make your last will and testament and power of attorney and all that. That's productized service. Then you could also really take it deep. If you like inventing and you like that sort of deal and you like creating physical products, you might have a service-based business but create a product and actually start selling it online or selling off of your website or using your uh, product as a way to create content online that will actually funnel people towards your services. So that's interesting. And so I, I really truly do believe that we as small business owners owners have to start thinking about how do we put ourselves out of business. And the one thing that's going to wipe us out is the the fact that other companies with a bunch of money like tech companies, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Google, the Microsofts of the world, they have a bunch of money and can come into our arena and wipe us out because they are willing to innovate, research and development, figure things out, change, evolve, and not allow past and what has always worked and historical trends of an industry to dictate what they're doing. And they just come in and they'll figure things out based upon 2019 type models in their mind using technology, marketing, using the tactics that are current, up-to-date, modern technology, science, and that's what the, that's what the, it's going to eliminate us. And so we as small business owners have to constantly ask ourselves the question, how do we put ourselves out of business? How do we put ourselves out of business when it comes to marketing? What's the next cheapest cost per click? How are we going to get in front of people the fastest? What's the SEO? Uh, but SEO is, okay, that's search. But what about paid media in the terms of social and then content marketing and blogging and creating the, the keywords and becoming the authority and really having an inbound marketing strategy where it's no longer you don't have to go rent space on Facebook and Google and creating where it's native leads coming to your website and then that pushes things to your services and to your website and your products and figuring out how vlogging and how the videos come and and bring people to your site but then looking internally and seeing okay how can I innovate in terms of what is the thing that is going to come on where's the weakest point where's the weakest link in my business what could be exploited by a big conglomerate or a big a big industry leader or tech mogul to come in and completely wipe us out. Mowing gets me scared in my land in my industry of the green and you know landscaping, lawn care, maintenance, etc. The reason I'm scared about lawn care is because of the robots. And I'm not scared, like we still do it, but it's a smaller part of our business than it was a few years ago because we've started focusing on things that aren't going to be able to be robotized within the next few years. And that is landscaping and tree trimming and all the other services that a robot can't do as easily because I feel there's a vulnerability for a Home Depot to come in or uh, a Amazon to come in and offer Prime members uh, free mowing for their for Prime members. Like I, I see that happening because they want to dominate the interior and the exterior services of your house. You know, you're seeing it with the doorbell with Ring, Amazon, and you're starting to see all these things coming with the smart home. Just you wait until Prime members get a discount on a mowing service that is a robot, and that robot is delivered by a drone or delivered by UPS, and then when it shows up in the front door, it basically opens itself and can start mowing your lawn based upon GPS coordinates. Like, I see that stuff coming, and I get worried about it. Not, not necessarily worried. I'm trying to, number one, figure it out myself, but then, two, realize that I'm not going to allow that to become a vulnerability for my business. And so you might not be in that scenario where drones are going to start dropping off your competitors <laughs> or, or taking away your work, but you have to start thinking in terms of what could they do to come completely change an industry? Because I promise you the taxis of New York were not thinking about Uber 10 years ago. They were just the focus on their next ride and making it faster and making their little efficiencies maybe a little bit better, but they were not thinking globally. They were not thinking large enough. They were not thinking about the innovation. They were not thinking about the startup that was going to come knock them off their shoes. Uh, the, the Marriott's of the world and the Sheraton's and the Hampton Inn's were not thinking about Airbnb coming along and completely obliterating the business model of staying in, uh, abroad. And so this is these are things that are, that are amazing to me. Why didn't Sheraton, why didn't Hampton Inn come up with the idea of Airbnb? 
Why did it take someone to come along and innovate and completely change an industry when there were people who had more money, more resources, more experience in that same industry and they failed to innovate? Why was it? Because they get complacent. They get, uh, uh, they become familiar with the past way of doing things and we as small business owners cannot afford to do that. We cannot afford to rest on our laurels and think about how it's been done for so many years. We've got to look at what other industries are doing, figure out what's working, apply it to our business, and that is how you're going to innovate. That is how you're going to change your business. That is how you're going to become more efficient and allow your team to grow in your industry and become the leader in your market. You've been listening to Mike Andes on the Business Bootcamp Podcast. I'll see you next time. Until next time, be great because nothing else pays.